Honestly, this video could have been a press release. Yeah. You know, the one in which uh, CEOs of two companies hold a folder in one and shake hands with the other? Why not? But one thing we've learned over the years, seeing is believing. The last few months have been really exciting. The two teams have been working very closely to unlock 15-minute rapid charging in the Altigreen three-wheeler cargo vehicle, the Neve HD. But no one's seen it yet. Really? Am I one of the lucky few who has? Yeah. Why doesn't the world get a glimpse? Yeah. Let's get started. Let's get started. I think the vehicle's at 1% SOC, right? That's right, the vehicle is at 1%. Let's charge it up. Uh, by the way, the, the e-pump and the connector, uh, they both camouflage because, uh, you know, the final design is going to be revealed soon. Uh, we asked ourselves, why should vehicles have all the camo? Oh. Uh, we have 15 minutes to kill. How about some coffee? Yeah, let's go. Well, well we're charging up and uh, pushing at 600 amps right now. It's a little noisy right there because a lot of thermal, a lot did of you, heat. Did you say 600 amps? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's it's because it's a 51 volt system. We got to pass 600 amps to actually charge this up in 15 wow. minutes. Yeah. Wow. 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 This moment feels uh, like life's come a full circle because uh, I'm not sure if you know this. Uh, Alti Green was the first OEM we actually met even before we started Exponent. Right. Uh, it it was a it was a meeting where at your office where uh, we we're just trying to figure out everything about the commercial vehicle space about charging and I think that meeting gave us a lot more belief and conviction to go build exponent. I'm not sure if you remember this, but uh, but Shalindra actually said, hey, if you're going to build a battery pack that charges up in 15 minutes, you guys will gladly adopt it. And uh, I think both of us have lived, lived up to our ends of the conversation. Uh, but putting you on the spot, did you actually believe that we would charge in 15 minutes when we pitched it to you? I, I guess, you know, uh, we were in between, uh, I think, awe and disbelief. I don't think we were absolutely certain that you would be able to pull it off. But I think in general, we realized that if you did, we would have a killer app and we would we would really be able to nail last mile transport in this country. So I think from that perspective, we just threw the challenge and uh, we're very happy that you were able to take it on. And uh, you and the team delivered. Yeah, very, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. 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 Well, well, it's happening now. And uh... yeah, so I, mean, I know a little bit about it, but why don't you tell us a little bit of what's going on over here? Right. Uh, so, so we have we have the e-pump, uh, which is which is our version of the station, and then we have the e-pack that we jointly built together. Right. Uh, the e-pack is an 8.1 kilowatt hour battery pack. It uses regular LFP cells. We allow 90% DOD, uh, which provides a usable range of around 85 kilometers with fully loaded, uh, and it charges up in 15 minutes. And to do that, we got to do the crazy 600 amps of, of current to actually get you know, there. I'm, I'm really, I mean, does Tesla even do 600 amps? No, they don't. Uh, I, I think most 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 uh, vehicles abroad probably work on a higher voltage. So, you know, you have lesser currents. But again, this is a unique challenge that we had to solve to unlock India. Right? Wow. And, uh, you know, but, but that, that, our job ends at getting the energy to the battery. But after that, it's all it's all Altigreen. It's all the Neve HD, right? So, so talk us, take us through what's special about the Neve HD. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, Altigreen is considered to be one of the oldies of the EV industry. We've been around for the last nine years. Uh, but we realized early on that until you build vehicles for the specific needs of our geography, and by geography, I mean India and the emerging markets of South Asia, Africa, South America, I think the needs here are very different. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's constant, um, you know, uh, obviously bad roads, a lot of water logging, um, you know, yep. abuse is rampant, uh, overloading is rampant. So until we're able to build something that works for this geography, you know, we're not going to be able to make a difference. Yep. So from day one, uh, back in 2012, uh, we've kind of focused on first building the technology stack that allows good electric vehicles to be built on it. So we have pivoted a couple of times, by the way, I must say, we've pivoted a couple of times. We started off with hybrids and we moved to electric drive trains, and now we are an, an OEM ourselves. So I think from our perspective, we built technologies that can compete with fossil fuel right at the design stage. And then fossil fuels that have been around for a hundred years, uh, you know, yeah. diesel's been around, it's doing a magnificent job until now. 
obviously it's very harmful uh, for us you know lungs and, and you know pollution that it is rampantly creating so there is a need and a very very aggressive need to make change happen i don't know if you knew about it but if you read the latest lancet report 2.1 million people lose their lives every year in india because of poor air quality 25% is attributed to road transport yep. so something's got to be done on a war yep. footing yep. who's going to do it i think it is going to be the startups startups yep. like you and i and i i think that's what we did so we landed up creating a vehicle today the vehicle has the top four things in the industry you'll be surprised to know maybe not <laughs> but uh, top four things in the industry you know the longest range you know the highest ground clearance the largest volumetric capacity that you yeah. see over here and of course the fastest speed all four things keeping in mind the needs for last mile mobility and now the fastest charging as well there you go <laughs> perfect perfect very nice yeah so so that's where we are and um, what's 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 your uh, what's your story what's going on there what special about expert yes absolutely well, i i i think rapid charging has been a, around right for a long time um, but you know people have always had to use very expensive and bulky cell chemistry so it's never been scalable so i think our our approach was i think india's first right how do you build a rapid charging energy stack that mm -hmm. everyone in india can own and afford mm -hmm. right? can that can be financed that you know uh, and uh, yep. yeah so so we early on realized that if we can rapid charge regular cells uh then there's suddenly rapid charge becomes very affordable and scalable and that's exactly what we do we've built a cell agnostic energy pipeline of sorts right uh what really happens here is we, we've got the e pump on this side and we've got the battery pack on the other so we build both sides of the transaction to ensure energy is just flowing smoothly right and uh we can use any cells so if you look at if you if you think cells are buckets then you can use any bucket we are sort of building the pipeline that you know fills that energy up from the grid into every bucket and you know a battery's got hundreds of buckets so every bucket's got to be filled up it's got to be balanced and every bucket's got to be managed for life so our bms is that's in sitting inside the battery is constantly monitoring every cell ensuring that you know every cell is taken care of um, and every charging profile is unique right uh, we don't follow something called cccv which is a charger just blindly charges the ba battery mm -hmm. uh, dynamically the bms is trying to figure out what's the best way to charge a battery relaying that to the e pump and together they're trying to figure out the right ways so we call this dynamic sort of adaptive charging right and so every time charging is different sometimes we finish in 30 minutes sometimes we we finish in 17 minutes uh, average 14 15 minutes uh, uh, so we prioritize safety followed by followed by ensuring batteries never cells never degrade followed by figuring out what's the quickest way to get that all that energy across into in, into the battery you know and uh, one of the few things that we early on we liked about your your first uh, spiel that you gave to us i think was this fact about being cell agnostic i think to me that was very very critical very very important because um, i think a lot of work is being done done around rapid charging but very focused on specific cell chemistries or specific cells and uh, you know the anode cathode and those kinds of things so i think here is a solution where irrespective of how cells evolve and new chemistries come about we will continue to have a fast charge solution and hopefully we'll continue to bring the price points down yeah right no that, that that i think i think i think bang on right uh i think very early on we realized that making cells is a is a manufacturing problem and not a technology problem and probably not something that startups will win on right a lot of large companies uh, that that are at it and probably will succeed and today the rate at which cells are getting obsolete uh, it used to take 10 years for a cell to go obsolete and today because there's so much focus attention so much r&d money yeah. every 3 years uh, cells yeah. go obsolete which means building a cell agnostic platform pipeline almost becomes the only way to succeed and uh, that's that's what we've done every cell pretty much understands voltage current temperature impedance and we speak those languages yeah, the yeah. bms speaks the languages so the pipeline remains the same keep changing buckets and actually charging can get better faster and get cheaper and i think i think i, I think yep yeah, that's that's you cool. know i think that's what we understood and uh, you probably know that um, we we closed um, um, a round of funding uh, recently and yeah, congratulations on that right <laughs> thank you yeah Big, big, and, big, big about forty million, right? Yeah, I mean, we've been at it for a while. Um, um, there were industry speculations whether you know the oldies will really be able to, <laughs> you know, considering all the young crowd out there, whether we will be able to get anything. But I think at some point maturity, uh, you know, played its part, um, and and people did believe us and trust us. 
But I think what really worked for everyone and a um, couple of things here. One is, you know, our investors, the new investors, I realized that uh, with the PLI scheme and all that that's going on, there are going to be a lot of very good cell manufacturers in India. Right. And these guys are going to create huge volumes of cells. And this is not going to be in a specific chemistry. So it's not just lithium. It could be sodium. It could be aluminum. It could be other things. Right. And these are going to bring down the price of cells a lot, Absolutely. which means that people will start having larger battery packs for the same price. Right. And that's when fast charging can play a very, very critical role. So that's number one. I think that's what we love about Exponent, right? That you've built technology that is above cells. It's not related to the cell chemistry below. So that's number one. I think from Altigreen's perspective, you know, we want to continue to push the envelope with respect to vehicles and technologies. And, you know, for us, I think it's taken us a long time because our focus very much is on the on the user, on the driver. Yeah. You know, and we are in a in a domain where possibly my customer is not appreciated and liked by most people. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. we're talking about a three wheeler driver or a you know small commercial yeah. vehicle driver. You know, it doesn't conjure up good images of yeah. you know a, you know a healthy person or whatever. Right. So we wanted to make sure that when we create a vehicle, it has to be very, very driver centric. So whenever we build something, it has to cater to his problems, make sure that we are eliminating the problems that he has, whether it is noise, whether it's pollution, whether it is range. So you'll be surprised to know we, we interviewed about 1600 wow. three wheel drivers before wow. we decided to focus on a pack. You know, at that time, the industry was focusing on, uh, you know, smaller packs, packs that gave 50, 60 kilometer range. This is 50, 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers, 80 kilometers, and you would charge for, um, you know, um, uh, uh, an extended period of time, seven, eight, seven, eight hours. So instead, we decided uh, that we'll focus on packs um, that um, can be rapid charge, of course, but focus on the driver. We've started off with three wheelers. I do want to break this paradigm of three wheelers and three wheels. I do believe that three wheels are yeah. going to be very, very interesting for our geography. Um, of different formats. Fast, Actually, slow. that's an interesting tease there. So, 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 with with the new round of funding, yeah, what does the future of vehicles look like? So, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, we do have three wheels. Um, we will likely add a few more wheels. I don't know if we will subtract wheels from it, <laughs> but uh, I do feel that we will continue to push this again, keeping the driver in mind. And I really salute these guys because think about it; it's his livelihood at stake when he's buying an electric vehicle, right? He's still trusting us. Yeah. You and I probably still don't drive an electric vehicle, yeah. but this guy is taking that risk. So, you know, hats off to these guys. So I, I'm really on board with that. And we're really going to be focused on building very good quality vehicles for this segment, for last mile mobility, both passenger no, and cargo. I think it's interesting you brought that. The two things that we deeply resonated with Altigreen, right? Uh, uh, point number one was the driver specific focus. I, I think the way I look at it today, when you go from diesel to electric, uh, the vehicle drives better, right? A lot more torque, uh, no vibrations, no clutch, right? And what's not to love, right? But suddenly you have this big hassle of charging. And, and for us, I think we resonate on the deeper point is how do you make the owning an electric vehicle mm. joyful? How do you instill pride of owning an electric vehicle? And I think, I think that's a point that we deeply resonate on, keeping the driver first. And second point is, I think, engineering first, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, today, today's day and age, there is there are, there's an MOE announcement almost every other day, but I think uh, both organizations have been working for the last six months deeply, focusing on engineering, focusing on unglamorous things uh, to actually get the product right. And, and we're talking about this few months away uh, uh, from actually delivering this to customers. I feel that's very unlikely what's, what happens in the EV space. So I think for both these reasons, I think very early on we realized that Altigreen is is the best partnership for us. Um, uh, and, and, and I think- Vice versa. We're very, very proud and grateful uh, for this partnership. And uh, awesome. Man. I think enough talk about us. Uh, I think the EV space is fairly buzzing. Uh, a lot of things happening. Uh, but what's an unpopular opinion that you hold? Oh my! I think um, swapping versus fast charge. I would. Um, I'd probably be in the second category. I do believe that you know there's a lot to be done on the fast charge side because of new cell chemistry is coming about. So this whole price war is finally going to come down to uninterrupted mobility. And that's where I do believe that I am in the fast charge camp versus 
And I promise you, there's no gun on stage. I, I am not holding Amitabh hostage. What's, <laughs> what's your that. opinion? What's your opinion? Unpopular opinion. Right. This might be a little unpopular because I was building two wheelers uh, before this. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. But but I think the first. I think everyone believes that two wheeler will be the first space that goes fully electric, and it's probably going to be leading the electric adoption. I think okay. quite the opposite. I think the commercial vehicle space is what's going to actually convert to 100% electric first. Right. Today it might not. The S curve is probably a little later in the commercial vehicle space because of of the driver profile, etc. We spoke about, but I think the pieces are coming together, and when they do, and when it clicks, I think you'll have the whole market flip instantaneously, right? And That's up to you. Perfect answer, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, actually, our charging is actually done, right? And like I said, we we uh, it takes everybody 13 to 16 minutes. Today we've done wow. it in 14 and a half minutes. For zero to hundred percent SOC, one one percent to hundred percent SOC. Incredible! <laughs> this is amazing. Very nice. You know that's what it's all about. Wow! And every time this happens, it feels really surreal that we actually charge a whole vehicle up in fifteen minutes, uh, and I cannot be more proud of both, both the engineering teams, both at Alti Green and Exponent. To put this together, I mean, it's just thank you so much. I'm very happy. To do awesome, this. man. Honestly, this vehicle can't be. This can't be the first time you're testing a 15-minute charge. So it's not. What has it gone through? We've done it 3,000 times in a single cell, and uh, this particular vehicle has actually done uh, 10,000 kilometers uh, oh. in just 40 days. So we, that's an average of 250 kilometers a day. Wow. Actually, on one particular day, we did 400 plus kilometers per rapid charging distance five times. I think now we want to deliver this freedom awesome. and flexibility to drivers. Awesome, awesome, exactly. That's what I want. So. Shall we make this official? Yeah, let's, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming today. Uh, yeah. So I guess my job's done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. You want, make a move. You want to drive home? Yeah. Oh, you can sure. drive this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. I can help you back it up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We'll be right